was the first cast, Brian. <laughs> it's a glove it's a, day. <laughs> it's a glove. He's a little guy, but he bit right away. It's like I think minus three <laughs> out. So we've got we're bundled that little one. Oh, now you know. you know what the worst part is. Is well, you know, if there. we're lucky, we're blobbing today. Yeah, so hit the here, blob. I'm gonna, and usually you can just hopefully. No, nope, it didn't come. Out. He's just barely hooked in the front, but little guy's gonna make me take my glove off. They eat it just like a chronomid, eh? Oh, there he is. Little wee guy to start. Oh. But the show's still biting this cold weather. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Our guides are icing up. Or... Yeah. Anyway, yeah. we're going to be out here blobbing on. Today, we're, is that what we're going to try? Blobs oh, all yeah, day, it's... Brian. We're not going to be stripping anything, I don't think, at least not early. Water's nice and cool. They should be looking up, see that nice little blob dripping down, down through the water. <laughs> <laughs> So it's a blob day today. We're in a, cam a lake around Kamloops, known for good blob fishing. So that's today when we take you sport fishing on the fly. Sport Fishing on the Fly is brought to you by Togan's Fly Shop, Maui Jim Sunglasses, and Hardy Rods and Reels. Well, that was a good one, eh? This oh, took right Oh yeah, that guy ate it. He ate it. He looks like a real fatty. <laughs> trying to keep him up out of the, out of the weed. They got some girth. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Anchor rope. Oh. <laughs> There's a little... look, look at how fat that is. A little chunk, eh? <laughs> <laughs> He's only like, what is he? He's like 16 inches long or something. I don't know, maybe a little longer, but wow. Flies right in his beat, right in the yeah, they take it just in the top, but this thing is the shape. It's the shape of a little coho <laughs> salmon or something. I don't want to put my hands in, Bry. Oh, I got what have a to. piggy! Yeah, just to hold him up because he's he's so fat that just to show him is. I, I don't know if I. <laughs> oh yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> he's he's like a 16-inch fish with. Just a super. Wow. You know, that's <laughs> that's what they say. That's a fish with shoulders. Shoulder, <laughs> shoulders and a beer gut. <laughs> that's what I think. Man, that fish is just the girth that you have to feed in here. Anyway, excellent. How we're approaching it is we have our little watermelon blob. It's just, it's been a killer. We've got, of course, Brian's bionic blob. We've got the watermelon blob. Seen to work great in stump this time of year. And again, it's, you know, mid-October. Water's really cooling down, and that's the key. You know, we're at probably 50 or 48 degrees. The fish are in looking, and, you know, Brian's going to do a little talk a little later on the Daphne and why the fish key on them. But here's a, here's a beauty. Took it right like a chronomid. We're just hanging in that shallow water. Oh, there he is there. A beautiful fish. Oh, oh flies out. Flies out. Oh well, he's got to sacrifice the yeah. hand. I gotta get cold, Brian. Yeah, you do it, Brian. <laughs> yeah, I'll do Proud it. Proud of you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay, move stuff out of the way. Flies out. Here's the fly. Now, this is one that we offer, of course, on our website. It's our what we call our watermelon blob. I'll show everybody. There it is. There. A little bit of weed. There's a watermelon blob. It's just the colors, you know, it's, it's got the green, it's got the pink, that kind of light orange. Yeah. It's just what the Daphnia yeah, color just, in the hair. It's like a neon sign down there. Yeah. 
It's just bright. It's just bright and they're and, feeding. Uh, imitates that little cluster down there. All right. Well, I'll try to hold this guy up. Ooh. Okay, yeah, you know what? That's cold water. I can't even. Oh, oh, How is the water, Don? Oh, it's cold, Brian. <laughs> it's cold. Here, I'll get him this way. Man, come on. There. Okay. There he, oh. there he is there. I don't want to squeeze him, but look there. at that. Beautiful. Look at the colors on that fish. Just gorgeous. There he goes. Oh, well, we should have a good day. You know, we just started. It is cold. We got up here, minus three. Water temperature, what, probably about 48? Down to 46. 46 now, so that's perfect for what we're doing. Yeah, yeah. Good. Well, we'll get a few more, and then we'll talk about it. When it warms up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ooh, that looks good, Bri. Oh, I, I beefed up to <laughs> my tippet because we're fishing right in, in the, the jungle here. This is a chunk. Oh, 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 oh. Look at the look girth at the, on this Look one. at the girth. Look. He's a fat slob. Look at the fatty. Oh. Looks like a little bit of a salmon. Oh, it's like a coal. That has to be the fattest. <laughs> I've, oh. That's the fattest one I've ever seen. Look at that thing. Oh my. Whoa. What a tank, Brian. <laughs> Isn't that a pretty fish, though? Wow. Oh. Look at that. Look at the girth on him. All right, he's going in. Oh. <laughs> That's a Chernobyl fish. <laughs> a Chernobyl is right. <laughs> What a Crazy. beast! Right in the weeds, eh? You just never know. It could be 12 inches, it could be 12 pounds what in here. What a beast! <laughs> oh, man. Another nice fish. Gee. You know, and that's, uh, that's what Dale was calling the hit and run. You know, we got to keep moving. So Brian's been just moving us along. You know, we keep hitting new sections on that weed bed, and we're just working that weed bed all the way up. And every time we get into it, we're getting some more fish, and this one's another dandy bry. <laughs> Looks like a good one. Not Looks as uh, one. not as obese as yours, that last one, but... You know what I find this year? Uh, you know, we're fishing stump, we're showing everybody how to, how to fish blobs, and it's just really rewarding. A lot of times, you know, you'll come out here, and we get the traditionals, right? We'll fish the leeches, and we'll fish the shrimp, but when... When fish are on blobs, when they're feeding on the daphne, especially when that water temperature is cold, it, you can't beat it. It's just too much fun. And it's just your chronomid setup. You know, dry line, long leader, just match the depth and, uh, and hook them. Oh, this is another slab bra, eh? Have you seen him? He looks big. He looks oh, big. Yeah. It's a quality oh, fish. Yeah. It's like you're... Oh. Flies out. Flies out, I know. Well, because they... There it is there. And again, that's the, you know, the watermelon blob. We showed everybody. You know, it's on the side. This is probably one of our favorite colors. But look at this tank. Holy cow. This is, this thing, I can't grab them. Yeah, if you're holding that up, Brian, I'll try to get under them a bit. Oh, look at that. Oh. Look at that. Look at that. <laughs> look at how fat he is. <laughs> look at, it's just crazy. Hold this guy one more time before we let him go. Look at the hot. Look at that. Look at how fat these fish are. They are just so healthy. And there he goes. Gone. Yeah. Right. <laughs> well, you know what we should do right now? Let's do a little talk about, uh, you know, why are the fish feeding on the daphnias? Yeah. What's the thing? Well, you know, in uh, these super productive lakes we got in British Columbia in the interior, there's really dense population of zooplankton which are those little green and orange and red dots you see in the water. Yeah. And the zooplankton cluster up into balls and uh, clouds of them. And they're an easy food source, so the fish just chow down on them. And late in the fall in particular, uh, the fish are looking for any good food sources because there's no insects hatching anymore. So they, they see these little balls of Daphnia and uh, 
for some reason, these uh, blob imitations of various colors and uh, the fish zoom in on them and they'll, they just suck them in, just keep swimming along, open the mouth and keep going. So, you know, some of these patterns are pretty bright and a lot of guys say, well, it's like fishing a little <laughs> artificial power bait, but yeah. not every color works and we've got to change colors as sunlight uh, changes during the day, cloudy days for sunny days. So it, it's, it's a whole new way of fishing lakes. Yeah, and is it good in the spring also, like the Daphnia? When do they start really going? Yeah, and they, they start in the spring. spring and yeah. They, uh, they build their population during the summer months. But what anglers need to understand is Daphnia move up and down in the water column. Ah. So they don't like bright sunlight. So uh, during the bright sunny days, they're down low in the water. And then uh, when it clouds over in the evenings, they come back up in the water. Oh, well, that's great. And that's why we're fishing the blobs. We'll exactly. So I love it. Okay. Well, let's get some more. There you go. Sport Fishing on the Fly is brought to you by Togan's Fly Shop, Maui Jim Sunglasses, and Hardy Rods and Reels. Yeah, we came in the bay, we got a few. We hooked into a few of them there, but it seems like they've gone the blob, then the leech, then the blob. Leech. Those two leaves, we got some in the blob. Let's try the leech. Let's try the leech Let's over there. Let's try yeah. the leech. We got to keep moving. Got to keep moving. Yeah, yeah, that's what we found all day. Move, hit a few, move. <laughs> Let's go do it. Well, had to change over to leech. You know, it was tougher on the, uh, what we were finding with the blobs is we had really good luck in the morning with the blobs. At about one o'clock, they, they started nipping at it. And unless it was moving, unless we were actually moving it, we weren't catching any. So we changed over to leech. Brian got a nice one. I lost, I just lost a dandy. And I got this guy who's kind of our mid-sizer, but still a nice fish. Oh, and Brian just missed one right there on the leech. So looks like we're gonna have to go with these for the leeches. And here he is here. Right in the top lip, and this is one of my favorites too. It's a, it's a cross between our ruby eye. It's a little purple. It's kind of my little purple jig leech. Quite effective, quite a good pattern. But you know, I lost one double this size a minute ago, but these are, you know, these are nice fish. Good fight. We've got fish moving here too, big fish, but there he is there. Look at the colors. And there's, oh, gee, never squeeze them, let them go. So we're hoping, you know, we've got uh, kind of one, 130. We're hoping for some more on the leeches, and then hopefully what normally happens is switch back to, uh, to the little uh, blobs. But Dale's been working different patterns too, and I don't know, it's crazy. Just, yeah, just uh, they've gone off the blob for now. Today on the bench, I want to tell you about Dawn's Purple Micro Jig Leech. Now, I tie this in a variety of sizes. I tie it anywhere from a size 8, even to a size 6 jig. Quite big, but I love this micro version. So make sure you have these materials ready before you tie the fly. For the hook, we'll use a Togan size 10 60 degree jig hook. We'll tie with some 12 watt hot orange thread. We'll use a 1 8 inch Togan's light pink slotted bead for the bead, some purple angel hair for the tail, some black purple Arizona semi seal for the rear body, and some black red Arizona semi seal dubbing for the front body. To start the fly off, got my jig hook in the vise and I put the slotted bead on. Now make sure you buy slotted beads because they fit on the jig hook just fine. So I move the slotted bead right to the front. And we're going to tie in our thread and cover a little bit of the hook. Now that we have the thread on the hook, I've taken a small amount of my flash. Now you don't want too much flash here. I've just taken enough, say about 20 strands, quite thin, and cut it off, keep it long. Then you're going to double it over your thread about halfway down the hook and just wrap that back towards the tail or towards the bend of the hook to form the tail. Once it's back, never cut it, never cut it sharply. What you're going to do is a little trick to cut your tail to length. Now, I want it about as long as the hook, so I'm going to finish there. All I'm going to do is rub my scissors back and forth and I'm just going to splay that material. Just keep pulling on it. Just keep rubbing your scissors back and forth on that material and that'll really 
make a nice tail on the fly. Never cut it because that'll make it really even. We want it very uneven. So that's a little trick you form a, a nice tail with. Now that we have the tail tight end, we're going to form a dubbing loop and make it quite short, only about uh, two to three inches because we're only going halfway up the hook. Take your thread back to the midway point and start placing your dubbing inside that loop. Then wrap your loop to make a nice dubbing loop and then we're going to wrap forward and as we wrap forward we're going to slowly pull back that material to form the back rear half of the body. Now that we have the rear half of the body tied in, we're going to form another doubling loop about the same size, you know, about uh, two to three inches long. Bring your thread forward right to behind the bead and put all your material in that dubbing loop. And when you lay it in the dubbing loop, again, make sure it's nice and loose. You want this material loose because you're going to pick it out later. And then wind your, wind the thread to form the dubbing loop. And then we're going to wrap forward right towards the bead to form the front half of the body and make sure you pull that material back as you go to form a nice body on the fly and this is going to be picked out a little bit later. Now that we have the front body tied in, I'm going to take quite a few wraps and build up a small hot spot. That's why I use the, the hot orange thread. You can use red thread, but I love the hot orange. Form a nice hot spot right behind the bead and then whip finish a few times to, to finish off. You can also put some head cement on, but I just like to whip finish a few times to make sure it's nice and secure. Now to finish the fly off, what you're going to do is just pick all the material back. Get a good dubbing pick and just pick all that material out all the way through. And that'll form a real nice body on the fly. And if you want this material to lay down real nice to form a real nice leech body color or uh, profile, you can actually boil in hot water for a couple of minutes. Not even, just get boiling water, throw it in there for 10 seconds and all this material will lie down for you. But uh, that makes a great little micro leech. So there it is, Don's Purple Micro Jig Leech. You know, I love tying them micro style, you know, size 10, quite small. As I mentioned before, I can even tie them bigger, but I really like this micro size and vary the colors. Again, you want multiple colors in your leech patterns because all leeches have a variety of colors. Make sure you have some of these in your fly box because they are deadly. Sport Fishing on the Fly is brought to you by Togan's Fly Shop. Maui Jim Sunglasses and hardy rods and reels. Looks good, Don. Another one on the leech bra. <laughs> They're liking that little purple, my little purple jig leech. They're digging it. You know, uh, ruby eye's always good in this lake. And again, they just went off the blob. They were yeah. biting it, but just, as soon as we put the leeches on, bam, we're into fish again. So I think that's always a good combination in the fall. Blobs. And leeches, eh, Brian? Absolutely. Great combo. It was getting kind of weird. We weren't using insects at all anymore. <laughs> <laughs> using all the crazy other stuff. Dude, this is another nice one. And you know, he's not huge, but just a real good fighter. Oh, very nice. Nice fish, Don. Nice solid fish, yeah. Oh, look at leeches oh, out. Flies out. The fly is out. Oh, it's gorgeous fish. Yeah, look at that. Nice look at little that. guy, little, nice little what chrome bullet. Oh, perfect rainbow. Beautiful rainbow. No. <laughs> All right, there he goes. Leeches, Bry. Yeah, they went off the blob. Yeah. Yeah, we always know that leeches are a phenomenal pattern in late fall 
on every leg. We just gotta get the right color. Well, we got that color. I'll show everybody the leech right now, but it's a nice little purple jig that I tie. Yeah. And it works. They've been yeah. on it. Well, let's show everybody the little little fly. Here he is here, I'll put him in the cork. And that's all he is. So it's a jig pattern. Yeah. So I put a little, uh, just a little, you know, orange highlight at the head end like I always do. It's got the, uh, the purple uh, angel hair that I put in. Just a little bit of purple angel hair. And then that beautiful, you know, nice uh, ready, you know, ready purple dubbing. But that's that little bit of flash of the tail, I think sets it off. It's always that angel hair. So anyways, uh, killer little, killer little uh, jig leech pattern. <laughs> Getting a little chilly now. That cold front's coming in, Brian. Oh yeah. This is our last day to fish for probably four or five days in around the Kamloops area. Yeah, and then yeah. then it gets warm. Well, not warm, but it's oh, get yeah. back to normal for November. Then it's going to get good again. I know. That's <laughs> when I'm coming back up in November. But you know, it was kind of a cool day. We started with the blobs. That's our our favorite thing to fish in the fall. Blobs, leeches, and of course shrimp. We have the blobs to start. Oh, just right. Pounding. Oh, big those those coho that we were catching that we were calling coho. They're <laughs> huge trout. But you know, you gotta sometimes you gotta have the leeches. I know guys will fish coronamids in the fall too. Yeah, they're there, but there's really not a hatch. Yeah. So best to fish the blobs and leeches, right? Yeah, I mean their go-to are always leeches in the fall anyway. Yeah. So it's been a bonus the past few years learning about blobs and how effective they can be. Yeah. But they have their place in time. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Thanks for the day, Brian. That was a lot of fun. Thanks to the Bulldog for joining us. But you know, this is a big lake. When you come out here, take care. Conserve waters, and we'll see you next time we take a sport fishing on the fly. I am. <laughs>